Professor Dibakar, you can start now. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone. So today uh, we are going to introduce nanotechnology program at Mahindra University. So I am uh, Professor Divakar Rai Choudhury. So uh, I'll be I'm the uh, head of physics, and uh, I'll be introducing to you our new program, which is coming up uh, from this uh, coming uh, academic year from July August and which is a nanotechnology program at Mahindra University. So uh, just for an introduction, this is our Equal Central School of Engineering building and uh, which is uh, within the Mahindra University, which comes under Mahindra University. And uh, So this is the leadership team of our Mahindra University. You can see the top left corner. This is Mr. Anand Mahindra, Chancellor of University. Top right corner, Professor Iyajulu Meduri, Vice Chancellor. Bottom right corner is uh, Professor Vishnu Paul, who is the Dean of Academics. And uh, bottom left corner is Professor Arya Bhattacharya, who is Dean Research and Development. So what is Mahindra University? So Mahindra University uh, started uh, last year and uh, on, uh, uh, through a order by government of Telangana uh, under the Telangana State Private Universities Act. So our main purpose is to educate future citizens for and of a better world. So what is the vision? Vision includes uh, not only the teaching, but this uh, teaching uh, including research and development and through which you, uh, you, you want to uh, we, we want to uh, expose students to latest uh, uh, R&D technologies and all these things. So not only the students, but our vision is to uh, a faculty and staff also to achieve excellence in pedagogy and contemporary frontiers of research. So this is the some views of Mahindra University. You can see that the top right corner is a aerial view. So this is the main building and uh, there are lots of uh, greeneries around it. This is a uh, bottom left corner is a uh, biggest classroom that we have right now, which is a 250 uh, seater classroom. Bottom left corner is a uh, courtyard of the, of the building. And uh, you see that this is some pictures which shows the greenery in the campus. So basically we target for multi-skill leaders capable of innovation and committed to inclusive and sustainable progress. So our uh, one of one of our uh, strong point is the interdisciplinary approach. So which includes not only mixing or integrating science and technology with humanities, ethics, and philosophy, but also design. Design is a very important thing because uh, it it can actually help uh, help to to tackle much uh, difficult problems and in a timely manner. So if you design it in, in time before starting a program or before starting uh, any any job, then that can bring you to the to the success or to the finishing point with much uh, with much comfort. So education with experience through entrepreneurial projects to solve societal complex challenges. So, so our education just not uh, bookies, but uh, we encourage entrepreneurial activities also, and which should lead to uh, uh, which should lead to uh, resolve some societal complex challenges. And as I mentioned, that the campus is um, spread over 110 acres of last green land in uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, city, so uh, that that is also required to flourish the young brain. Now, with this introduction, uh, brief introduction to Mahindra University, I will come to the uh, serious topic that is nanotechnology. So, what is nanotechnology? Let's start with a bit of history. So, there was a famous lecture by uh, Richard Feynman in 1959. So, uh, talk. Uh, the name of the talk was there is plenty of room at the bottom. So the, there actually for the first time he envisaged uh, 
this nanotechnology, the possibility of nanotechnology, the, uh, uh, the potential of nanotechnology. So what, what, the, what did he mean by there is plenty of room at the bottom? So here the plenty of room at the bottom means that at an atomic scale or at the nano nanometer scale, there are a lot of possibilities are there. There are a lot of possibilities. There are a lot of uh, parameters are there to play around so that, that technology can be improved. Uh, new new technologies can come up so that was the main purpose of this uh, seminal talk i would say uh, by richard feynman in 1959 and many people believe that was the uh, that was the first uh, that was the first um, first uh, 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 first approach first uh, towards uh, nanotechnology so later on professor taniguchi coined the term in 1974 the term nanotechnology 1974. So after 15 years, he formally said or uh, coined this nanotechnology term. And after that last 30, 40 years, 50 years, a lot of work is done. And in day-to-day -day life, we see the effect of this nanotechnology almost in all facets of our life without understanding, without knowing that how these things are happening. Mm, all across the uh, all across the humanities, people are using nanotechnology in in different um, in in day to day life in different uh, scenarios. So, as a major breakthrough, two things are considered uh, as breakthrough or the uh, building building block of nanotechnology. One was 1981 uh, invention of scanning tunneling microscope that is STM, which works on the concept of tunneling. And uh, later he also got Nobel Prize in physics. Another thing was fullerene. That is a two-dimensional material, uh, which was invented in 1985. And uh, for that, uh, the inventor got uh, Nobel Prize in 1996. So these two are uh, some, uh, uh, something which was uh, considered as the very basis of beginning of nanotechnology era. So. Now let us come to what is nano actually. So nano is nothing but size or length scale. So what is that nano length scale? So for example, uh, uh, let us try to uh, go towards nano from what we, we can see in uh, with our normal eyes. So for example, this is a frog eggs. So a typical dimension of frog eggs are say one millimeter or yeah, here of, of a single frog egg. Then if we uh, see it, uh, blood cell or RBC that uh, many times when people go for blood test, we see uh, doctor ask for uh, doing this blood testing. So the dimension of that blood uh, blood cell is around 10 micrometer, bacteria is 1 micrometer, virus is 100 nanometer, which is 10 times smaller than one uh, uh, 100 nanometer. Then antibodies are 10 nanometer, glucose is 1 nanometer, and one single water molecule is 0.1 nanometer. So you see that this is that frog egg that we can see with our bare eye then at the step of 10 times if we reduce then uh, one can reach this water molecule which is of the order of 0.1 nanometer but of course beyond this frog eggs all these 10 micrometer one micrometer these things are not visible so this is the size scale so you see that this is called when you reach this close to the nanometer uh, length scale that is called nano wall. This is micrometer length scale, micro wall, and this is macro wall. So, what is the difference? So, difference is in macro wall, uh, in day to day life, we can see the things here, but as we lower down the size, when you go to the micron size or even nanometer size, we cannot see them. But there, uh, there are a lot of possibilities, a lot of things are happening, and studying those things are actually target of that nanotechnology and how one can develop the next generation um, devices next generation technologies utilizing this concept that is what nanotechnology is to to give you uh, a better uh, perspective of what is nanometer means so let us take a human hair which is around 0.1 millimeter or which is also 100 micrometer now if uh, from the cross section if you make it 100 slices then, then each slice will be nothing but one micrometer because it is uh, this width is 100 micrometers, so it comes to one micrometer. Then, if you can make thousand slices, then one slice is one nanometer. So you see that 
in in mathematical uh, mathematical representation this one nanometer is one billionth part of one meter but in reality if we try to visualize if we try to feel what is actually one nanometer then let's see if we take one a human hair then first we slice it into 100 times then 1000 times and then we can reach one nanometer and of course it is not visible hmm. with our uh, with our uh, uh, with, with our sensors, human body sensor, eyes also a sensor. But you see that this is a micrograph, scanning electron microscopy micrograph, where one can see this uh, this very small sized, uh, uh, small dimension. So now there are two things why we study uh, nanotechnology. So there is one thing is natural, another is man-made. So what is natural? There are many things which are happening naturally at the nanoscale level. Hmm. And at the same time, now with the advent of science, with the advent of technology, we can do many things at the nanotechnology, uh, at, the, at the nanometer scale, which can give us many new properties. Those properties finally use or uh, usable in uh, several aspects of domains, be it engineering or be it medicine, be it medical, in many, many places. So, for example, this is a dust mite. This is the ant, ant is five millimeter. This is a dust mite. You see it is only 200 micrometer. This is fly, fly ash, 10 to 20 micrometer. You maybe hardly can see it, but this you cannot see it. Single particle I'm talking about. This is a human hair that I have uh, explained. This is RBC cells. Uh, so like that, these are more um, uh, your uh, natural, natural, uh, pro, uh, natural things that is happening at the nanometer scale, but we cannot visualize them. The, let's say this is the head of a pin, which is uh, uh, at the border of, uh, even if not at the border, which is macro level. Now these things are nanometer level things, which we cannot visualize still with the help of nanotechnology, one can achieve these things. So for example, these structures, if you see these rings, 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 these are actually the gap between them are of the order of 30 nanometer, which we cannot see, but it has lot, uh, several applications. So similarly, this is the another things. So this in this slide, I try to give you a side-by-side -side, uh, feeling of what is the what is the things happening in uh, nanometer level uh, uh, naturally and what is happening at the nanometer level by derived by human being so as i said that the beginning of a small revolution so this nanotechnology is considered as a beginning of a small revolution why this nanotechnology is a field that focuses on the development of synthetic methods and surface analytical tools for building structures and materials typically on the sub 100 nanometer scale so you see that the nanotechnology domain is at at, at sub 100 nanometer scale the identification of the chemical and physical consequences of miniaturization and the use of such properties in the development of mobile and functional materials and devices. So what I have explained in last few slides, those are the things here mentioned more or less. So the things which are happening beyond 100 uh, nanometer level that deals with, uh, the, that, that makes the nanotechnology and utilizing the properties of material or device at that level and building up the instrument to study that uh, uh, that nanometer level actually makes you the overall nanotechnology. So this is what is said here. So as I said that this nano, when when we are reducing the size further and further and further, when you go to the sub 100 nanometer length scale, the properties can be different. And how you can tune those properties, how you can change this, the, those properties, how you, one can control those properties so that it can be useful for the benefit of the human being, so that uh, how it can be used to develop a new technology. These are, this, this, this comes under the gambit of nanotechnology. So uh, since uh, I have taken uh, an example of COVID-19 um, COVID-19 vaccines and nanomedicine. So we are all loaded all over the world with this COVID-19 thing, and we all are impacted very badly. So here also this nanotechnology plays a very significant role. Whatever nanomedicines, whatever COVID vaccines or COVID medicines or COVID research is going on, these are actually uh, at the 
nano medicine level and at the nanometer level uh, so uh, this is another aspect of nanotechnology uh, uh, that that is actually impacting human being very uh, strongly so this is a uh, to give you a idea of the cross disciplinary nature of nanotechnology you can see that we have physics broadly we have material science we have chemistry we have molecular biology and then inside that we have nanotechnology for of functional devices, nanomaterials, uh, nanobiotechnology, nanotechnology for chemistry and environment. Then we have electronic information, transport, aerospace. So you see that almost everything is covered in nanotechnology. So just to give you an example, so for, uh, I would like to mention one thing that uh, we see a very, uh, in, in context of civil engineering, we see new and new kind of bridges are coming up, right? So big bridges comes uh, coming up, which are uh, uh, joining uh, one one part uh, with the other part across the across the um, mountains and everything. So uh, it, uh, it it is very interesting to know that nanotechnology plays a role there also. How 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 you can make strong cable? How you can make new and new material like cements and all these things so that it is more efficient. It can hold more. Uh, more power, uh, it can hold more stress, uh, so that it, it it stays for a longer time. All these things are uh, are uh, are nowadays um, controlled by by nanotechnology. At the nano level, you 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 play with the materials, you derive new and new material, you invent new and new materials which are for, further used for the cable in the bridge, for the uh, for uh, cement to. To build the tower and all these things. So this is an example I want to tell you where a big thing you can see and how that is connected to a uh, ultra small like nano dimension uh, research or nano dimension things. So broadly, uh, the, the, this picture is pretty pretty crowded. So broadly, uh, the nanotechnology applications can be mentioned like this. For example, in medicine and drugs, for medical, in energy, energy is a uh, is a big societal issue for 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 us nowadays. Uh, uh, we need more and more uh, renewable energy. We, we cannot depend on fossil energy uh, more because that will. Uh, that will be over at some time. Nanofabrics, nanofabric comes in the in uh, in context of uh, clocks, nano devices, or your palm top, laptop, these that things. Those are actually built up on the basis of nano devices. Optical engineering, for example, miles after miles, signals are. Sorry. The signals are transmitted from one continent to an, another continent. Continent. How can you do that? So there is also nanotechnology, uh, nanotechnology defense and security, hmm. uh, cosmetics. So for example, in sunscreen lotion, gene cops and nanoparticles are used. So it's 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 nanotechnology wherever you can see, and uh, and the field is still. Uh, beginning and field is uh, expanding. So how how we are going to structure our course here? So primarily nanotechnology deals with the design, fabrication, implementation of micron and submicron size electronic or photonic devices broadly. So development. So quantum mechanics is the uh, most basic fundamental theory which actually started this um, and uh, this nanotechnology era this nanotechnology boom and it actually developed the last 30 for 40 years very rapidly and which is going to dominate uh, next uh, this century also and uh, as i said that it almost affected all facets of our life so whatever we have wireless communication pump top computers optical network networks satellites every, everywhere you see nano medicine you see you see the nanotechnology effect of nanotechnology now in our nanotechnology course we are broadly going to focus on three domains one is nanoelectronics another is nanomedicine another is nanophotonics so uh, these are the three domains we are going to focus mainly and um, uh, and and then I'll I'll explain what are the advantages of this domain. So naturally, when you uh, when you uh, 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 a course like nanotechnology, we we want to give you option to 
specialized in, part, in, in, in some particular domain as per your interest. So, for example, if it is a nanophotonics, then this kind of electives we are going to um, offer, which means introduction of nanophotonics, carbon nanotechnology, name, same names, uh, microelectromechanical systems, nanoelectromechanical systems, photovoltaics, which is directly related to renewable energy, plasmonics. Hmm. So, in case of nanoelectronics, we'll have electives like nanoelectronics or organic electronics, basics of nanolithography. So, why nanolithography is important? I have shown a few slides back that at nanometer level, many structures are made. But how those structures are made? How those how human beings are making the, those small small devices at the nanometer level that we cannot even see? So, there comes the nanolithography. So. And of course, uh, sensors are very important. Sensor at the heart of uh, making any any devices. Uh, you have to sense. Uh, you have to sense the heat. You have to sense the temperature. You have to sense the stress. You have to sense the strain. So, and uh, these nano sensors are uh, uh, one of the important thing that will be covered. Then 2D materials. So 2D materials like graphene, fullerene. These are 2D materials. So these materials are very thin of the level of one nanometer. I have already explained what is one nanometer. So and but it 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 can show exotic properties, uh, very very different properties. So these materials are also important which will be uh, taught in the, the gambit of uh, nanoelectronics then we have nanomedicine where we'll uh, teach our analytical tools and techniques in medicinal chemistry nanomedicines at pharmaceuticals pharmaceutical industry is one of the industry which is booming and considering the current uh, this covid situation and the health sector it is supposed to boom for uh, next 100 years or 200 years or uh, uh, or as long as possible so but that has a tremendous tremendous um, uh, dependency on nanomedicine so uh, other than that advanced drug delivery system micro and nanofluidic so these are also comes under the under nanomedicine those are the electives we will offer now let us see what are the jobs or career opportunities uh, uh, available so in case of nanophotonics it will be more uh, light sector light uh, related sector so you can see that there are many startups are uh, coming up plasmonics integrated plasmonics there are of course there are jobs in academic research labs but also in private sectors there are jobs in darpa national labs uh, nrl drbo isro on uh, nanophotonic side then uh, these big multinational uh, companies like hp intel ibm lockheed martin they also work samsung they also work in uh, nanophotonics and of course the typical jobs like developing lasers uh, integrated photonic circuits high bandwidth optical fibers so those all comes under nanophotonics uh, domain so in nanoelectronics of course with the miniaturization of circuits nanoelectronics is important so uh, the jobs one can have in the electronics and semiconductor industry like micron uh, like intel and all these things and then met uh, the material science uh, related uh, industries which uh, which deals with textiles polymers auto and aerospace industries uh, even sporting goods biotechnology so inverter control and of course university and lab research military and national security so there are a lot of scopes and uh, not only that um, if if the students who wish to go for higher study, they can go for uh, research fellowships or postdoctorals, and then finally one can think of a, a career in academics like as an assistant associate full professor. Entrepreneurship is one thing possible, hmm. and then uh, many new new uh, jobs are coming up even in MR, uh, MNCs. So, for example, graduate engineer, huh? then trainee patent attorney. So, there are uh, probably the maximum number of patents are. Uh, filed in nanotechnology domain now uh, unlike earlier 30 40 20 years back now you know this um, patents are not uh, filed by solely by the attorneys but now does to check the scientific background many grads and uh, post grads also uh, take up this kind of job in the in the uh, in the in the uh, law firms so what are the career opportunities in nanomedicine? As I mentioned that pharmaceutical industry is uh, one of the best domain. 
and uh, hyderabad is hub of uh, pharmaceutical industry so apart from that many um, many uh, these mncs they also have uh, jobs in uh, nano medicine nano medicine de development how you can uh, deliver the medicine to the right organ in the body so all these things comes under nano medicine so this is a list of companies uh, which are working nanotechnology in india so for example ad nanotechnologies uh, advanced nanotech lab so uh, we have um, accumulated this name and these are spread over mumbai karnataka bangalore even hyderabad so this, there are also uh, jobs are uh, possible hmm, in indian companies so apart from that we have uh, several research labs at mahindra university as i said in the beginning uh, we try to encourage uh, research research and development so there are many research labs in uh, inside uh, mahindra university campus so for example artificial intelligence super com uh, computer lab we have nvidia super computer lab and then uh, innovation entrepreneurship hub then we have center for robotics uh, uh, then geotechnical research lab tribology and materials research laboratory so physics research lab center for sustain uh, sustain infrastructure and system so there are several labs are there so uh, as per the interest of a student who he or she can uh, do projects um, internships or uh, btech projects short term projects all those things they can do so that they can um, enlarge their capabilities so these are some typical uh, uh, typical instruments uh, that we have a lot of other instruments but i'm just showing some uh, research level instrument that we currently have and um, uh, several are adding adding up uh, soon so this electron beam evaporation this can this can coat this can deposit thin film level materials not only metals but dielectric also this is a ramon spectrometer which is a very high end uh, system uh, by by french company Yo -Yo and then we have this uv visible spectrophotometer we have infrared uh, spectrophotometer and there are many other research level instruments we have currently in our um, campus uh, however i could not see all uh, so all of them now what are the course highlights so the course highlights are basically the total credit of the btech nanotech core course will be around 160 170 credit so primarily first semester will be uh, spent in general courses which are introduction to engineering uh, uh, mathematics natural sciences humanities design and then the remaining five semester will be more focused on uh, on, on nanotechnology and they are also uh, depending on the interest we'll try uh, one one student can um, specialize in nanomedicine or nanoelectronics or nanophotonics uh, so the, those those courses will be spreaded over these domains so eight semester will be uh, mainly a project semester so student can do a project in industry or even a research project with uh, many faculties so as i have said that we have several uh, state of the art laboratories so one student may uh, try to do a project there in those labs and that can help them to fetch a publication or patent and which can help them further in grabbing a good position in usa japan or some uh, abroad universities so on top of, uh, apart from these things we are currently in discussion with virginia tech usa uh, for a collaboration uh, so uh, according to that collaboration if it goes well if it is successful then a student can spend one semester or one year at virginia tech usa campus um, so uh, but of course depending on their performance they have to perform well and otherwise virginia tech has a center virginia tech india in chennai which which is also equipped with very high end um, nanotechnology instruments so they are also they can seek for internships we'll, we 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 can help for that so these are the broadly the course highlights the nanotechnology course highlights that will be um, uh, that, that that can be offered to the uh, potential prospective students and uh, we have several highly experienced faculties uh, 
in, in MU right now who will be leading this nanotechnology course. So first, uh, Professor MU uh, Venkat Raman. Dr. Venkat Raman did his PhD from IIC Bangalore. Then he was in ETH Zurich for 10 years. Uh, he works on uh, surface science, surface chemistry at the nano level. So then we have Dr. Chitra Gunnani. Uh, who, who is uh, in um, in nanomaterial, Dr. Chitra Gunnani and Dr. Gomoti, they are in nanochemistry, nanomaterials. So Dr. Gunnani did his PhD from uh, Rajasthan and then he was in Southampton and then NTU Singapore and then after that he joined here. Dr. Gomoti did his PhD with JNCSR in Bangalore under Professor CNR Rao. So CNR Rao is the Top most person in uh, nanotechnology in India. So Senaro is also Bharat Ratna, the only uh, uh, only academician who got Bharat Ratna. So Gomti did his PhD under uh, Professor C N R Rao, and he works with nanomaterial. Uh, he works in um, in uh, this thing. Uh, uh, renewable energy and those things. Then we have Dr. Joyce Sri, uh, mainly from physics. So she works in um, liquid crystal, some meta, meta surfaces, and um, uh, she did PhD from Hyderabad University. After that, she was in Slovenia and a short stint in Cambridge. Then we have Dr. Muttaja Bora. Dr. Muttaja uh, Bora works in magnetism so he did phd from iit bombay and then he was in several places uh, outside india and iit kanpur as postdoctor then we have dr anil annadi who did phd from anyways uh, singapore and after that he was in pennsylvania for some time and recently joined us as a uh, faculty we have dr kn dipti so she is a phd from University of Hyderabad, then she worked in PRL Ahmedabad and she worked in Fermilab in Chicago. She has very good uh, exposure and very uh, several high level publications. And this is myself. Uh, I'm currently uh, dealing with this nanotechnology and I'm uh, broadly involved with the physics department. So uh, this is the highly competent faculties that we have in uh, nanotechnology domain and they are supposed to teach the students all the nanotechnology related subjects. So yeah, so thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know, I'm ready to take them. So if you have any questions, feel free to, free to ask. I cannot see any question. Hello. Uh, professor, you can just uh, expand the questions window. Or there are a few questions in that. Uh, I'm expanding. Where is the question? You can just double click on it. Expand. Oh, okay. uh, there are some questions. OK, I got them. So first question is, when will it start? Uh, then located at where? Achha, when will it start means probably the program uh, he is asking. So the program is intended to start from August this year tentatively, but because of the COVID situation, all these things, there can be some modification. Located at where? So we are located in Hyderabad. Uh, it's um, north, north of Hyderabad, or rather northwest Hyderabad. So uh, the uh, area is called Bahadur Palli, hmm, near the ORR, uh, Outer Ring Road. Sir, is there any job available for any uh, NSC tracers? Uh, so we are, so the third question is, is there any job available for NSC tracers? This is an undergraduate program. So this is a BTEC program uh, that we are going to start. So I don't think uh, NSC past people uh, it will make sense for the MSc past people. Sir, I already completed my MSc physics. Uh, what is the time duration of this webinar? Time duration is one hour, 45 minutes to one hour. Uh, how can be an 
electrical engineer student correlate himself to nanotechnology so there is a technical question how can be an electrical engineering student correlate him correlate himself to nanotechnology so um, uh, as I, as i said that uh, uh, broadly we are going to focus in three domains or probably these are the most important three domains which comes under nanotechnology those are nanoelectronics nanomedicine and nanophoton so now uh, wh wh what is nanoelectronics as an electrical engineering student as an electrical engineering student you you deal with uh, let's say uh, diode you deal with triode you deal with transistor huh. now when you are miniaturizing your devices uh, day by day you you're you're following the moves law your devices are becoming small and small and small and how it is possible because you reach transistors you reach diode you reach electrical component they are also uh, uh, they are they, they are their size is also reducing and now it has gone to the nanometer level the size of his device that is whether it is uh, no, a transistor or whether it is a diode or whether it is an oscillator all these are your uh, electrical uh, devices now when you go to the nano nanometer level of course the fabricating them is a challenge Re realizing them is a challenge also new new issues come up so to, to resolve those issues to to design those devices to implement those devices you need nanotechnology so this is how the electrical engineering is connected to nanotechnology how to get into the college how to get into the college that um, that rakesh can answer sir what about campus placements uh, campus placements we have a placement cell but rakesh can answer probably this question uh, uh, we have a placement cell uh, and uh, sorry uh, professor Dibakar, like a few questions i have answered by chat you can ignore those and just respond to the other ones which are not taken Achha, you have written something in the right hand side, no? Yeah, Achha. exactly. Yeah. Okay, then I'll ignore those uh, those questions. Okay, does the nanotechnology field have major presence in medical field? Yes, that is what I was talking uh, right uh, in uh, in nanomedicine. So yes, nanotechnology has a very 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 major presence in me medical field. So whatever uh and and that presence can be termed as nanomedicine and which is going to be one of our one of our area of uh, focus in this course so uh, whatever medicines whatever the pharmaceutical industries are developing new new med medicine all these are based on nanotechnology and you can call it as nanomedicine also so yes nanotechnology has uh, uh, huge dependency on or, or rather i should say medical field has a huge dependency on uh, nanomedicine so not only that uh, when you develop new medicines what are their properties what are the chemistry of the uh, of those medicines so those things comes from nanochemistry and then properties are discussed uh, pro properties are characterized using the nanotechnology equipments and most importantly these atoms of these molecules these uh, molecules which are used in this pharma, uh, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical industry, those are at the nano dimension. So it's it's very much dependent on nanomedicine. Not only that, now uh, the latest research is when we are doing uh, this several surgery. So invasive, the era of invasive surgery is gone and uh, doctors and of course patients all want to avoid that in, in invasive surgery. So um, so in order to that in order to avoid in, in, in invasive surgery if you one can send uh, a device and it can go reach that particular organ and can do the um, do the operation or do the take the necessary actions this also this also um, uh, control this also uh, motivated by nanotechnology this can be done by nanotechnology it is said that nanotechnology can cause mass de destruction if it is unchecked. What are your views on on that? So, see, anything unchecked can 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 do mass de destruction. So, it is not like nan uh, nanotechnology only. So, even E is equal to mc square, based on which the nuclear uh, bomb was developed. So, there is also uh, nanotechnology. So, uh, but 
uh, it is not only nanotechnology and the viruses that covid virus or anything these are all at the nano level so uh, so so um, yeah, mass destruction uh, is can 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 happen but it is uh, not correct to say that nanotechnology can do it. Anything which is uncontrolled can can go towards uh, destruction, whether mass destruction or uh, few destruction. That is different thing. Uh, but necessarily not uh, nanotechnology can do mass destruction. But most of the approach, most of the things nanotechnology is doing nowadays, that is for the betterment of the society. So, Sir, what are the prospects for PhD in nanotechnology? The prospects for PhD in nanotechnology is very high. Uh, so nanotechnology is one field which is very much oriented towards research. And um, we also do nanotechnology research in nanotechnology here. Many I have many students, many PhD students in nanotechnology here, and so my colleagues. Um, so there are huge prospects of nanotechnology. There are a lot of scope of research, as you can appreciate as one can appreciate that um, this is a very uh, this is a uh, nano level is such a level where one cannot see or uh, uh, see see the things at all right so that means that there are more chances of more chances of investigation how the things are happening so from that perspective there are a lot of uh, prospects for nanotechnology and since its application domain is so broad right from engineering to medical to plots so there are a lot of lot of uh, chances of uh, research uh, there are a lot of open questions up there which can be answered by research so uh, what are, what are, what is the next question uh which is better course among ai robotics and nanotechnology uh, no uh, this no one I, I i cannot answer this question it all depends on your interest what you want to do hmm. uh, so every every course is good every course has its own prospect but it all depends on your interest if you are interested in nanotechnology or robotics or artificial intelligence whichever you should go that the the main point is one need to excel one need to excel uh, so that uh, so that he can build a good career and to excel uh, in my belief you should have an interest uh, direct interest on it without interest uh, nothing is good what type of project are we going to do in nanotechnology kishan reddy so projects uh, it depends um, where you want to um, uh, uh, where you want to ex uh, expertise, whether it is nanomedicine, nanochemistry, or sorry, uh, nanoelectronics or nanophotonics. So, depending on that, you can choose your projects. So one can do a project in nanomaterial synthesis. Uh, Dr. Chitra Gunnani and Dr. Bomti, they are uh, doing nanomaterial synthesis. Then there can be nanomaterial characterization. I personally do nanophotonics. So you, one can think of nanophotonics also, where you can trap light to enhance um, solar energy conversion. So there are uh, uh, many, many, many projects are there. One can do in nanotribology. Uh, so uh, all these projects are available. You can do project with the existing faculties, or you can probably do project with um, with industry also. So all options are there, and we encourage everything. I had completed my MSc in 2020. Uh, we are talking about BTEC, so it doesn't make sense. What is the minimum required JE mains percentile to get admission? So that uh, answer. How, how to get into Mahindra University? What is specialized course in Mahindra? I'm not understanding. I think that uh, that is an answer. How can you get a good research in intensive if I'm second year BTEC student? So to get a good research in uh, intensive, uh, uh, you, you you can work with a with a faculty here. There are several labs, several research labs we have we have developed. So you can try to um, 
try to attach yourself with any of those labs uh, and uh, see good research intensive and good research thing is uh, not like it, it is not like making a toy uh, it is not a 15 days one month thing so you have to hang for uh, around the program for some time so if you can if you can hang with the problem then uh, that should turn out to be a good research intensive so i would say that in summer you have three months break in winter you have one month break so in total you have four months break so these four months if you want to do a good research intensive then try to stick to a problem it's not that one month you do one problem and three months you do another problem so better you spend these four months five months in one specific one problem so that will turn out to be a good research intensive for you or good research project for you is there any uh, equipment analysis available for making analysis of nanoparticle yes yes uh, there are many uh, equipment so for example uh, thin film deposition is one equipment equipment which can be used for uh, making a nano uh, a nanometer level uh, films then chemical vapor deposition is one uh, technique where you can make nanoparticle then solid state reaction is one technique using which one can make uh, nanoparticle then fib if i fib is called focused ion beam that is another particle another technique using that one can make nano size structures so these are all uh, how to make the uh, nanoparticle or nano size structures then for the analysis what you need you need characterization tool so xrd is one uh, that kind of a tool then raman spectrometer that we have so uh, that one can use for the characterization scanning electron microscope is one tool that uh, is used for the characterization so there are several analysis or characterization tools so now uh, we have many of them and we are on the process of getting many, several of them how can we correlate among ai robotics and uh, nanotechnology okay so this is a very good question now uh, how can one correlate uh, among artificial intelligence robotics and nanotechnology see now science or technology has reached a level where everything is cross-disciplinary so in the sense that as i during my talk i mentioned about uh, uh, one example from civil engineering where i have say told you how uh, making a uh, making a um a bridge a, a br bridge uh, can be uh, uh, can be influenced by nanotechnology similarly about your discourse in artificial intelligence robotics and nanotechnology so uh, let's see what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is nothing but it is based on huge amount of data more the data you have more you can predict your intelligence becomes artificial right so that is the uh, the basis of uh, basics of artificial intelligence robotics we already know that it is the uh, it is the robot instead of the human being who can go and do the job and nanotechnology we have discussed so how one can do the how one can uh, uh, connect them so let's say the nanotechnology robotics has a connection in nanomedicine hmm, or uh, nano surgery for example so uh, so what one can do uh, in case of non-invasive surgery, you want to uh, reach a or, or organ uh, in in a in a in a body. So how one can do that? You make micro robots. Those micro robots swims through the blood and goes there and do the uh, surgery and puts the right medicine. The medicine comes from nanotechnology. Robotics is here now. What is the role of? Uh, role of artificial intelligence at the role of artificial intelligence is uh, is this that there is a chance of um, of failure or you may not be able to do the right thing so you need lot of lot of data so right so that data will train the robot how to do the job in, in the most precise way and nanotechnology can come up with the uh, medicine so this is one way this three can be correlated i am just giving you one example there are hundreds of such examples uh, where this uh, uh, these three domains can be connected so but broadly i want to tell you that now the research or the technology has reached a level where everything is interdisciplinary so no one should try to so, should try, try try to confine himself or herself with a one particular um, 
expertise or specialization. It's the one need to know, even if not in details, but at least the basics or uh, broadly what the other field is doing. Then the teamwork is possible, the connection is possible. So potential career opportunities after this, do they need to complete master's score or can you get jobs uh, after this um, graduation? So I have mentioned about several uh, companies uh, which are in India, uh, based in Bangalore, uh, Pune, Bombay, Hyderabad, uh, even Ahmedabad. So uh, jobs are available there, but one can go for masters also. There are many um, good programs are happening in USA and also with our um, uh, with our French partner called Centrale in uh, Marseille in Nantes. So there uh, one can go for uh, master's uh, level courses. Not only that, in Japan, uh, this is a very uh, hot, hot topic. Uh, so one can go for a master's also, or if someone wants to go for a job, that is also possible. And in many slides, I have already explained that there are uh, multitudes of jobs are um, possible. And it's a domain which is picking up, right? Last 30, 40 years, mainly was in the research um, in, in, in research and now after the research uh, uh, initial research phase phase is over now uh, it's going towards the industrialization so we, we, we foresee there can be a lot of jobs available already there are several companies and startups are coming up in India so so uh, what does what is the next question? Uh, what type of project are we going to do in nanotechnology? I said uh, I completed MTech in mechanical. Uh, how, how will the placement center be? We will not take care of that. We have a placement cell, and as far as I know, uh, they do a very good job. Uh, and um, uh, we try to find the uh, jobs, appropriate jobs for you. And many high high salary jobs are already. Um, already taken up by many students can high school intermediate students apply for him um, i think that's too early i have wondered uh, what is the meaning how to get into mind university what is specialized course in mind uh, potential job after the graduation do they need to come to uh, that i answered if i join you in phd after electrical is there any issue in my career ahead what will be the issue but this is mainly for uh btech not only btech program this seminar is mainly for the nanotechnology btech program this is not for faculty jobs you can go to the job portal and see there what kind of significance does NATO hold for aerospace uh aerospace aerospace in the Aerospace, aerospace in industry. Uh, what is that? What kind of significance does nanotechnology hold for aerospace industry? As I said, that nanotechnology is something which is actually now present. It's omnipresent, basically. It's everywhere. So even in case of uh, aerospace industry, so one thing is that. Um, uh, that how how you make how you make the the, the flight the, the airplane lighter and lighter lighter as well as strong it should be light but it should be strong it should not be weak so they are actually uh, nanotechnology comes into play so the, the development of materials which can be used for building a building an aircraft uh, so that 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 is again uh, nanotechnology is playing a big role on that. Then when uh, in, in, in the air when aer aeroplane is moving, so how how this this thrust is taken care of? So some special coating can it be used uh, uh, over, over the uh, aircraft? So there again nanotechnology comes into play. How can a system use nanotechnology for some innovation? And so I said that artificial intelligence is now a very uh, a very hot field. So if you have knowledge of AI, deep learning, machine learning, and nanotechnology is a uh, concept where 
uh, which which uh, at, at, the, at the research level it uh, it deals with lot of data and so whenever you have lot of data so artificial intelligence or your dlnl can be can be utilized so what is the basis concept of nanotech what is the basis so basis concept of nanotech is nothing but quantum mechanics so it is um, some 120 years back it was first um, done by uh, um, uh, uh, by Cal, uh, by uh, uh, Marx, and uh, that is the basis of uh, uh, nanotechnology. So, what quantum mechanics says that what you see in the classical world and what you see in the quantum world, this they are different. Uh, the properties are different, and this quantum world is activated when your length scale is very very small it is so small that it reaches the nanometer level a few tens of nanometer or even one nanometer so then your properties are changing so if the material maybe when it is bored when it is large showing some uh, properties but when it goes to the nanometer level its properties are changing so that is the main basis of nanotechnology and the change in properties that can be predicted that can be uh, that, that 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 can be um, uh, that uh, uh, that can be confirmed by quantum mechanics so quantum mechanics is the basis concept of nanotechnology what is the income status of nanotechnologies uh, sorry i don't know what is the income status of nanotechnologies but i cannot comment Sir, does robotics and mechatronics have any relevance with nanoscience? Yes, I have already answered this question that now it is such a, a situation that everything is cross-disciplinary. So you cannot isolate one or two domains separately, but there are overlapping and all uh, big projects, uh, all societal relevant projects takes, uh, needs to needs connection between uh, these different domains, robotics, metacarbonics and everything. And I've already given a typical example in medicine where robotics plays a role. <clears throat> So what are the opportunities in nanotechnology after graduation? Sir, can you please suggest me what are the opportunities in nanotechnology after graduation? Yes, I have mentioned in the slides. Let me reiterate again. So now, of course, research and development is um, is one opportunity. Uh, one can go abroad for uh, MS or, for example, in France or USA, and one can go for uh, jobs also. So many. Indian companies are coming up, uh, many startups are coming up, so there uh, one can go for jobs uh, with nanotechnology background. So what is the basic concept of nanotechnology that I have explained already? Also, can you please suggest post-graduation option? Yeah, that is what I'm telling. Post-graduation, normally you can go for a job or you can go for higher study and, and research and development. So job, uh, um, job industries are coming up in india many multinational companies are also interested in uh, nanotech background and of course has study is the other option and that you can go abroad for example you can go to france or you can go to usa france equal central is our uh, partner so they have many uh, postgraduate program in uh, in nanotechnology so those can be available can you use nanotech mechatronics from the or I to innovate something new? Uh, why not? Why not? So the question is, can you use nanotechnology and mechatronics combinedly to innovate something new? Why not? Uh, definitely, one can one can do that. There are uh, a lot of opportunities in uh, mechanics or mechanical engineering with um, in connection to nanotechnology. For example, in my slides, I mentioned about names and names what are those names and names so names are micro electromechanical system names are nano electromechanical system so from the name you can see that you have the nanotechnology and you have the mechanics or mechatronics or mechanical engineering so what happens that <coughs> now the chips are becoming smaller and smaller and you want to do chips or actuators those are you want to you want to do the whole performance in a small chip and if uh, which is uh, a few hundreds of micron and your devices inside those chips 
which are few hundred of microns are uh, nanometers, hundreds of nanometers. So those actuators, those um, uh, those um, microelectromechanical systems, uh, uh, how how it can do that? So here nanotechnology comes. So for, for for example, you want to develop a sensor. You want to develop a pressure sensor. You don't want a big sensor uh, for that, but you want a very uh, a, a, like a chip. So the principles may be uh, similar that you use in case of uh, with your mechanical engineering background, but you want to replicate that at the nano level. So you see that more or less those things are coming at the at the uh, the concepts you have at the uh, at the at the macro world at the macro level, but you want to do it at the nano level so that your chip is smaller and smaller, so that it uh, saves your money. Uh, it can be more compact. It can be more easily uh, uh, usable. So this is how these uh, different concepts are connected with each other. I am from pharma industry. Any options are there for collaboration with industry? Yeah, Hyderabad is a um, hub of pharma uh, industry, and we have um, we, we we have um, we have um, focus area on nano medicine also. So therefore, there should be possible of doing PhD for working employees. This is not the right. Uh, forum, can you use your lab or technical help to improve the stability of a product? I don't understand what it is. Any industry for doing research? Yes, industry collaborations are um, are, are encouraged. On on can uh, do that. What's the minimum rank in JE for admission? What about fees? Okay, so these are the questions I could see here. I have answered. And I think there is not any more questions. Just to get done with the questions, so you can uh, you can wrap up the session with the closing remarks. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, so yeah, so we're done with the questions, so you can uh, you know we can wrap up the session with the closing remarks. You want to wrap up the session, or you have any more question? No, no, no more questions. We can wrap it up. Oh, so we can have, okay, okay, okay. Then uh, thank you very much for your time and attendance, and uh, hope you have uh, you have got your answers. You have got an uh, idea about the program. Okay, we are stopping here then.